Starting with the next series on the expected topics from international relations. So the first is the India-China hotline total 54. Now this hotline is basically a relation between the foreign affairs and the external affairs ministers between the two countries. The idea is to de-escalate any tensions to focus on the security issues at the urgency. And in June 2020, we witnessed that there were numerous clashes between the Indian and the Chinese army in the regions of Pangong. So uh, we have taken a separate lecture on Pangong, so very, very important, the region and the geography of uh, the regions of uh, the line of actual control. Then we have the Galwan Valley, Demchok and Dalat Beg Aldi. Dalat Beg Aldi, one of the highest airstrips in India, is again very important. We have covered a separate lecture. In retaliation to it, India actually blocked nearly 43 mobile apps from China. This ban was brought under Section 69A of the Information Technology Act. The next is the Quad meeting. As we already know, the four nations, India, Australia, Japan and UN, uh, US came together Sorry, uh, to have this quadrilateral group which is also known as Quad and this is in uh, opposition to the rising power or the dominance of China. So again the nations are important, India, Australia, Japan and United States. China however calls it a kind of mini NATO activity which is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and uh, NATO which is North Atlantic Treaty Organization is a political and a military alliance and according to China this quad uh, or quadrilateral dialogue is similar to mini NATO. This quad dialogue is between the four nations and the idea is to have a strengthened pillar for democracy worldwide and to give this a more uh, better position to check the dominance the growing dominance of China the next is transatlantic alliance now the United Nations declared that transatlantic alliance is back, uh, back and the idea is to defend democracy across the globe. This was brought in at the Munich Security Council which took place at Munich in Germany. The next is this investment relationship, this negotiation started between United States and European Union. The idea was the various agreements which were related to investment, trade, health, safety, environmental protection and the various issues which were brought by UN administration across the region. The next is the Senkaku Island dispute. We have already talked about Senkaku in the previous lecture. Again, it is very, very important. Important. As you can see, Senkaku Island region is a region of only 7 square kilometer but highly disputed between the region of China, Japan and Taiwan and this are the various islands as you can see and the distance from the various islands. So as per the 1960 agreement between Japan and US, the mutual security treaty in case there is any outside attack on the territory of Japan, US would come and support Japan. China has been uh, was criticized by United States as the ships were encroaching the region or the territorial waters of Japan near the Senkaku Island. And then US has also accused China of having a Cold War mentality. So those were some of the uh, major disputes that went around the Senkaku Island. And then uh, from the Japanese side, it, this region is also having the Nanshu Shoto Islands which is the islands that was devised after the treaty between Japan and US and was under the trusteeship of US. This was however returned back to Japan in 1971 and uh, Senkaku Islands are the part of the bigger, bigger group of Nanshi Shoto Islands that we have talked about recently. The next is China is now trying to bring up new villages in Arunachal Pradesh. So just 5 kilometers from Bumla Pass in the region of Arunachal Pradesh, China has reported that it has been constructing three villages villages in India. Now as per 20, uh, 2020 November, a full-fledged uh, uh, village has been built on the banks of river uh, Sari Chu in the Arunachal Pradesh upper Subansari district. Also this village is very close to the line of actual control. The construction of this village indicates China's efforts to build civilian settlements in the disputed territory with India and also China is not recognizing MacMohan line saying that the MacMohan line is illegal and unacceptable. The 1914 convention which was held in Shimla signed by 
by the Tibetan Convention were actually not having the rights to have uh, the region by China and the same was delineated as the MacMohan line on the map. However, China does not obey the MacMohan line and this line of actual control has three sections. The eastern section is in the region of Sikkim Arunachal Pradesh, the middle section in Uttarakhand and Himachal and the western section in the regions of Ladakh. Now, according to China, entire uh, Arunachal Pradesh is considered as South Tibet. Tibet itself is the autonomous region of China and this has a significant implications on India. So uh, recently we have been moving with numerous steps. For example, 10% of our funds are going for border area development program. In just a period of 27 days, Dapo Rijo Bridge has been constructed on Subansari in Arunachal Pradesh by India. We have led to a foundation of a tunnel which is known as Nichi Fu in the West Kamang district of Arunachal Pradesh. The Sisri River Bridge in the lower Dibang Valley has been constructed and this connects the Dibang with the Siang region. Uh, all weather tunnel has been constructed in Sela Pass in Arunachal Pradesh which connects uh, Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh to uh, the remaining regions and the region of Gauhati. Uh, nearly 10 census towns have been selected and those would be part of the state government of Arunachal Pradesh and those would be the census towns lying along the Indochina border and therefore have been given priority. Indian Air Force has, re uh, has inaugurated a resurfaced runway in the Vijayanagar in Chalang district in Arunachal Pradesh. So those are some of the developments that we have done on our side and indeed Bogibil uh, bridge has been important. This is the longest railroad bridge which has been constructed and connects Pasigat in Arunachal Pradesh to Dibrugar in Assam. This was inaugurated in 2018. The next is the falling rupee reserves of Iran. We have seen that recently the exports with Iran have been significantly declining from India and this has been uh, seeing how the uh, uncertain finance and the policy changes of the Iranian government has been seen. Also, India is no longer part of the Fardas B gas field project, which it was, where ONGC was one of the major stakeholders. Now, we have no longer, uh, we are no longer part of the Fardas B gas uh, field project in Iran. So again, it has been important. The next is Bharat Bangla Maitri Bridge. Now this has been inaugurated in the south district of Tripura. This is considered as a Maitri Setu which has been built over which river? Yes, the answer is Feni River. Feni River flows between Tripura and Bangladesh and originates in the region of South Tripura. It is a nearly 1.9 kilometer long bridge which joins Sabroom in Tripura to Ramgad in Bangladesh and this symbolizes a friendly relationship between India and Bangladesh in uh, the region of Tripura and therefore has been important. Uh, National Highway and Infrastructural Development Corporation has been maintaining these roads and this project is one of an important access point to Chittagong port in Bangladesh and therefore has been very important. The BRICS group, the anti drug working group of BRICS has been important. India has raised the issue of darknet and modern technologies for drug trafficking. Now, what is the idea here is, India believes that most of the narcotics and uh, the issues related to narcotics are part of the dark net and therefore, focusing on the dark net becomes important because India has quoted that the UN Office of Drug and Crime report uh, the UN Office of Drug and Crime report has quoted that India is one of the major centers for drug trade which includes the cannabis as well as the newer prescription drugs including tramadol and uh, methamphetamine. So those are some of the important drugs which are part from India and India is considered among the illicit trade, uh, the drug trade relations. So there are two parts which where the opium production parts are lying. One is the golden crescent. Now this is the region of Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan in the west. The other is the golden triangle in the southeast Asia. Now golden triangle is one of the oldest narcotic supply route to uh, Europe and North America and one of the major producers 
of opium similarly golden crescent the region of iran afghanistan and pakistan is also one of the major producers and distributors the next is understanding the kora museum and the new gas field in turkey so kora museum has been converted into mosque recently it was initially built during the byzantine empire the internal walls and the domes have the mosaic designs and uh, wall paintings which is done on the wet wall called as frescoes uh, usually depicting the biblical stories uh, the church has been seized and later on converted into mosque by the ottoman empire and this was after after the conquest of constantinople so historically chora is important and later on chora museum has been built uh, so this has again been important the next is the gas field in the region of black sea so recently turkey has discovered the gas reserves and it is believed with this turkey rather than being a net importer of gas would become a exporter of gas so turkey as of now is highly dependent on russia iran and azerbaijan for energy imports with the discovery of this gas fields turkey would become a net energy exporter rather than importing energy from russia iran and azerbaijan india has been pulled out of the multinational trilateral service exercise in russia which is known as Kavkaz 2020. Now, Kavkaz 2020 is an exercise which is also known as Caucasus 2020. It is a four-year exercise cycle of the Russian army. Uh, it was previously held in 2012 uh, and 2016, and then 2020. So, every four years it is held, and this time it was in the Akshitan province in southern Russia. The reasons for the withdrawal is because uh, Chinese, uh, Turkish, and Pakistani troops have been participating. Also, participating. also involves the georgian um, breakaway uh, regions of austria and uh, abkhazia in the exercise and this region has not been recognized by india and that is also cited as one of the possible reasons why india has withdrawn from this now the next important is sri lanka has a new draft constitution sri lanka has a new draft for a new constitution and this would also amend the 19th uh, it, it would also abolish the 19th amendment now 19th amendment was passed in 2015 it proposed to not only limit the executive powers of the president with two years of presidency but also strengthen the independence uh, structure of judiciary executive and the public services this also prevented dual citizenship now why this has been important because two of the uh, rajapaksi family members have dual citizenship of sri lanka and uh, us and therefore new constitution the new draft for the constitution highlights one country one law for all people and since it's very interesting that since 1978 19 changes have been brought to constitution and therefore lots of uncertainty have been there around the constitution of sri lanka new changes are aimed to bring in more stability into the parliament and bring in people's direct representation india and sri lanka definitely have very friendly relationships but recently we have seen that Sri Lanka has gone with friendly relations with China as well. RBI has talked about 400 million currency swap to Sri Lanka for boosting the foreign reserves and also we focus on joint military exercise. Two of those are Mitra Shakti and Sinalex. Uh, Sinalex is the navy exercise and Mitra Shakti is the military exercise. So both of these uh, uh, exercises have been important. We have also given assistance to build more than 5 50,000 houses to those affected by civil war in sri lanka so india's assistance have been important now china has been constantly involved in the regions of tista river we have seen that uh, unequitable distribution of water policies have been seen and bangladesh has been constantly asking for fair and equitable distribution of the tista waters from india based on the lines of ganga water treaty in 1996 so india bangladesh relations have been 
been uh, constantly there india has been granting nearly 15 to 20 lakh visas every year for uh, tourism medical treatment work and education in bangladesh lot of medical students from india go to bangladesh for completing their uh, bachelor's programs and therefore we have a huge relation with bangladesh also india has been uh, providing 10 billion us dollar assistance to bangladesh and this makes one of the major component of bangladesh's total recipients of the global um, global income or the global assistance coming worldwide so of the total 30 billion 10 billion comes only from india so definitely india has been supporting bangladesh on the other hand bangladesh also has been supporting india during the emergency funds across the sark emergency fund meetings and this the river as we know is the river that flows from india uh, india and bangladesh it originates in the chungthang region of sikkim and flows south towards west bengal and finally drains into the region of bengal uh, nearly half a dozen districts of north bengal all are totally dependent on Tista river and also Tista covers the flood plain areas of Sikkim and has been important as a lifeline for Sikkim. The next is the energy currency swap for Sri Lanka as we have seen 400 million energy uh, 400 million currency swap has been approved by RBI for Sri Lanka. Now this is a aid to strengthen the foreign uh, reserves and also provide foreign currency loan at a better interest rate than it could be borrowed from the direct foreign markets and therefore we are trying to provide a boost or a financial stability to Sri Lanka and this currency swap for Sri Lanka is an effort in this direction when the market uh, access has become uh, significantly uh, contracted. Similarly, this was currency swap. Another interesting aspect is the territory swap. China has been proposing territory swap with uh, Bhutan where China says that there is a package solution. Uh, the package solution is uh, the valleys to the north of Bhutan including the partial lands of the west which includes the Doklam should be exchanged. Now this exchange would give China a direct access to the trijunction region or the chicken neck region of Siliguri reaching to India. And therefore, Doklam swap is considered as a strategically significant event that could lead to significant developments or changes. Now, India and Bhutan share a very friendly relation as per the Treaty of 2007. India has been protecting Bhutan from external threats. India has been a guide for the foreign policy of Bhutan. We have been signing numerous issues of common national interest and uh, this treaty uh, says that the sovereignty has to be maintained and this territorial swap could be an uh, impact uh, to the policies of India and can be a national threat, a security threat. So China is also claiming this take over the Saktang region and this is the Bhutan's eastern boundary region. So again has been important. The next is in the region of park occupied Kashmir, Azad Patan has, is one of the major hydropower projects of 700 megawatts which is being planned by China and Pakistan constructed on Jhelum river in the Sutnoti district of park occupied Kashmir. Now there are already few other projects Mahal, Khola, Chakoti, Chakoti, Hathian and Karoth as the major projects which have been seen and these have been on a built own operate and transfer model. Uh, this would be a 90 meter high dam that has been planned and this would be expected to uh, start by 2024. The project would be transferred to Pakistani government after a period of 30 years after its completion and therefore Azad Patan one of the hydro power projects is again one of the major water controversies that India has with Pakistan mainly in the region of Gilgit Balochistan region. The, uh, the next is 
the collaboration of israel and india in terms of defense sector recently we have been seeing a conflict uh, the constant conflict between israel and gaza and uh, india however would be one of the uh, major supporters we could say probably for israel the reason being india is having a strong defense cooperation with israel most of our emergency procurement come from israel spike anti tank guided missiles the heron unmanned aerial vehicles are uh, through the uh, route and then we have fdi which has been increased in defense from 49% to 74% which is again indicative of more cooperation india is one of the largest consumers of israel with a sale of more than 715 million us dollars in defense also as per the stockholm international peace research institute after us and russia israel is the third largest supplier of defense items to india Israel has supplied the M58 mortar ammunitions uh, in the India Pakistan war in 1965 also it has supported India during the Pokhran test in 1998 and despite of the sanctions the international isolations after the international uh, after the nuclear test Israel has continued the armed trade relations with India and India has a close tie with Israel when it comes to defense procurement the next is in uh, Mauritius a new supreme court building is being established and this is an indicative of a strong bilateral relation between india and mauritius Mo most of the population we say nearly 68% in the mauritius are indians and therefore indian diaspora in mauritius is important and the celebration of pravasi bhartiya divas has been done every year the coastal surveillance radar stations uh, india has been party to it and then india also also shares the anti piracy operations in the exclusive economic zones of mauritius for surveillance uh, which includes illegal fishing poaching drug activities or human trafficking activities uh, we also see that there have been movements not only in india but across the globe so san isidro movement in cuba is important it is started in 2018 to protect the state censorship of artistic work through decree 349 and decree 349 is a law which would provide cuban government for restricting cultural activities it does not approve india and cuba are the founding members of non align movement and therefore india has close and cool relationship with cuba uh, recently we have also witnessed that catsa sanctions have been brought by us to turkey and those relate to the purchase of s400 missile systems from russia india is also planning to by the s100 s400 missile systems from russia and this could be indicative of sanctions further now catsa basically have 12 types of sanctions and the major reason why these sanctions have been imposed on turkey is that uh, the presidency for the defense industries which is the turkey's main major procurement uh, agency has been procuring from uh, us also and therefore if uh, data is being uh, procured if uh, fighters are procured from jet planes are procured from us and you are also procuring s400 missiles from russia there could be data leak to russia which is uh, a severe security issue and therefore sanctions have been imposed the next is uh, india is now chair to who executive board uh, we have different regions six who regions in which the who member states are divided the african american southeast asia then we have european east uh, mediterranean and west pacific india along with 10 other nations which are botswana uh, colombia ghana guinea madagascar oman korea russia and uk are part of who executive uh, member there are 34 individuals who are technically qualified in the field of health experts who are elected to it the term is 3 years the board meets every uh, uh, twice every year and the main idea is to take decisions related to world health assembly uh, follow up and provide advisories and facilitate the work of world health Uh, assembly so world health assembly is one of the major decision making bodies of who delegations from all the who member states attend uh, the meeting and they determine the policy and the appointment of director general the financial
financial policies and how uh, the things and the programs the budget should be approved the next is protocol on inland water transport system now india and bangladesh signed a second addendum on the protocol on inland water and transit a uh, trade system both of their countries have started a long term trade relationship the first protocol came in 17 uh, 1972 and last was renewed in 15 2015 for five years. It focuses on new routes with new port of call. So, what are the six port of call in India and Bangladesh are already mentioned here. So, on India, it is Kolkata, Haldia, Pandu, uh, Karim Ganj, Silhat, and uh, uh, Dubari. And then we have five new port of call which have been established on both the Indian side and the uh, side of Bangladesh, and therefore have been important. So these port of call are important. The proposal to set up multi-logistic parks in Jogi uh, Jogi Gopa is again important. And how shallow draft merchandise vessel movement have been started, introduced between. in chilmari in bangladesh and dubri in india have been important the last is open sky treaty open sky treaty talks about a kind of uh, uh, agreement which was signed in 1992 came in force uh, in 2002 to and brings in a continuous surveillance of flights over one another territory and these are the unarmed flights so treaty was established as a aerial surveillance for its partners uh, us and russia are its signatory india is not a member to the open sky treaty the stand of us and the stand of russia are important russia has been constantly accusing united states of restricting the usa flyover in the regions of georgia and kaliningrad in russia and russia intends to next the crimean peninsula uh, along with the open sky refueling airfield region so this new start treaty is important the new start is the new strategic arms reduction treaty treaty between us and russia for limiting the strategic offensive arms supplies was brought into effect in 2011 and later on this treaty has also suffered from the inadequacies in the process of verification so those were some of the major developments that we have seen in international relations we would be bringing in many more expected uh, topics for environment political science history and another important concept so stay tuned before your examination if you have any questions any doubts feel free to post those in the comment section any specific request on the videos would be entertained at the earliest possible so if any topic is required for help please mention that in the comment box as well alternatively you can reach us to admin at examrace.com have a safe day ahead